Okay, uh, next up we have Elizabeth Bustamante giving a talk called uh, Top 5 Footprint Mistakes That Even Professional Engineers Make. Elizabeth is a electronics engineer and PCB designer. As the CAD manager at SNAP EDA, she is responsible for leading a team of engineers in the creation of PCB libraries, ensuring that the team is constantly evaluating and improving its quality processes and efficiency. Uh, Elizabeth holds a bachelor's degree in electronics engineering from a university in Columbia that I cannot pronounce. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Um, thank you so much for uh, having me here today. I'm really happy to see <laughs> all these people. Um, so I'm an electronics engineer and PCB designer from Medellin, Colombia. And uh, I got into electronics. I'll, I would like to tell you why, because a lot of people ask me. So. Uh, I got into electronics because I wanted to help my dad. So my dad owns two radio stations in a small town in Colombia. And he has always had a lot of problems um, trying to repair his FM transmitters. And uh, I just wanted to help him to solve that, his situation. And so what happened was that I fell in love with electronics, just as everyone here. So uh, <laughs> that's how I got into electronics. Um, so now I am the CAD manager of SNAP EDA, and uh, I lead a team of uh, 10 component engineers, and uh, we are creating thousands of libraries uh, per week. And we're also um, trying to find ways to um, prevent errors from happening. And so that's why today um, we want to explore uh, the top five footprint mistakes that even professional engineers make. So I hope it helps everyone to like get to know some of these issues. So, uh, so in this talk, I'll go through why high quality libraries matter. Uh, we'll discuss some of the common symbols and footprint errors that uh, we have seen um, among the news and also the professional PC designers. And then I'll go through the need for verification and um, some teams about how your team can implement it, uh, processes for better verification. And then I'll, go, I'll share some tips um, and also some tools that can help you to stay uh, focused on building the best electronics possible. So before we get it started, uh, let's talk about libraries. Uh, as you know, each component requires uh, a schematic symbol. And a symbol is just a representation of a component that describes pink's functions and types. And then we have the, the PCB uh, footprints. The PCB footprints are needed um, when designing the physical layout uh, of the circuit board. And then we have, uh, there are 3D models, of course, and in case you're integrating uh, mechanical design. So today we'll be focusing just in the symbols and the footprints. Um, so why are libraries so hard to get right? Um, I always thought that components of libraries are the heart and like the soul of every electronic uh, design. And so the number one reason is obviously to ensure proper manufacturing. So for example, if you pad, if you pad land is off by um, a fraction of millimeter, then can cause improper soldering. And the second one is uh, liberty matters because they ensure consistency and reliability in your designs. And finally, we have um, libraries help you to enab enable your CAD tools features. And so, for example, if your pins in your schematic are pro improperly defined, um, your electrical rule checking are not going to work properly. So it's going to flag, uh, for example, errors where there are not errors. So now, um, uh, why are lab libraries so hard to get right? Uh, because uh, within every data sheet, there are multiple part numbers. And each part number has a different package and a potentially a pin name and different uh, mapping variations. And so for each pin, you know that um, 
there is a range of data needed to be captured between your circuit and design and layout tools. And so also because in the component industry there's a lack of data sheet consistency. So when it comes to how the information is represented in data sheets, um, each manufacturer company has like their own way to show um, their data. And so we always we also have um, lack of um, standards and our industry alignment. So as you know, there is IPC standards, there are IEEE standards, uh, but it doesn't necessarily cover things like, uh, for example, how will you define uh, your pins for integrated circuits, SQL schematic pins. And so finally, I will say that Sometimes libraries are oversight by some companies, and um, they, they sometimes don't realize how much goes into high library quality. So um, as I just mentioned, we have IEEE standards, so we follow that for uh, schematic symbols. And for PCB, uh, layout, for footprint layouts, we follow IPC 7351B. And so again, this only covers a portion of things. Um, for example, there is a standards for clearance, but there are not really standards around seal screen. So one of the big problems I will say uh, engineers have is um, the problem that we have to solve is massive. So there's hundreds of millions of electronics components out there, and there are infinite users' preferences too. There are so many application-specific requirements, and up on top of that, uh, we also have industry standard changing constantly. So for example, IPC 7351C is being uh, developed. So that's another thing that is gonna be challenging. Um, so today, I would like to to tell you that I'm not going I'm not going to tell you how to design your libraries, but I just want to share some of the experience we I have had and I've seen in my team, and uh, those experiences uh, have caused uh, real manufacturing problems. So, so let's get let's start with the basics. Uh, I have a question first. So, uh, has anyone here now created a symbol or a footprint before? Okay, awesome. <laughs> so, um, this is one of the most uh, basic mistakes that I see. So, pin mapping issues. Um, it's a very critical error because you know it can cause wrong connections, or um, in the worst scenario, it can create shorts. So uh, I will say, please always, when you're looking at a pinout table, double check all the connections you have. Then we have uh, pad dimension errors. Uh, when you're manually, th th this especially happened when you're uh, creating custom pads, custom footprint pads. So uh, it's very easy to, to it's a very um, easy to make mis a mistake uh, to make and uh, it can cause serious soldering problems. So um, I'll highly, I will recommend you to, w especially when you're designing these custom paths, to always uh, keep an eye on the data, sh on the data sheet, all the recommended manufacturing dimensions. So then we have uh, the seal screen uh, too close to paths. So this is one of the most common issues that I've seen uh, since I started working on this. Um, so as you know, if there's seal screen overlapping exposed pad cover, it, it will cause bad solder joints. And so um, I know that some fabricators will, will be able to give you uh, like clearance specifications. And I also, I also know that some of them will also remove the seal screen that it's um, like too close to the pads or even overlapping the pads. And so that helps, right? But I will also give you another tip, an extra tip, and it's that if you, um, CAD, CAD tool allows you 
to um, run like the seal screen DR seal uh, in your was while you're designing. I think that's that sh that that should be great. That's a good thing to do before manufacturing. Then we have the run all by dimensions. Um, so while designing your component outline or your uh, code yard dimensions, you can mis uh, misinterpret the uh, dimension, and this might result in not being able uh, to feed your component um, into the footprint outline. And then we have the wrong pin sequence. And so this issue, uh, it's a little bit annoying <laughs> because um, it's like when you're looking at a data sheet and you don't see enough information about the pin sequence, you try to guess or you try to look for like an application that is using the con that connector. And so I just recommend you to contact the manufacturer and just ask them um, what it ask them and make sure if your pin numbers in your footprint are in the correct order. And now um, I would like to show you n uh, the one, the issues that we've seen um, in, that are made for the professional PCB designer. So we have the mirror views. Um, <laughs> this is one that I see a lot, a lot. And uh, sometimes when you're looking at a data sheet, uh, the recommended footprint layout, it's um, following the top view, uh, but in some case, it will be flipped. And so if, you're not, if you don't notice that, you're going to create a wrong, wrong footprint. <laughs> and, and so what I have done with my team is that um, we always check if there's a 3D model available or a, um, as, yeah, like a step file, and we try to see if they match. Considering, like, thinking into account that if the tree model is, is correct, right? <laughs> so, uh, has anyone ever made this issue before? Wow. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Yes, uh, that's, uh, that was actually one of our users told us that, uh, told us the same. He, he was like, oh, I actually bought the component and I was comparing the dimension. I was like, I print the design and I like was trying to see if, if it, was, it will fit. And, and, they, and I was like, oh, that's a really good <laughs> tip. Okay, um, then we have the wrong or misinterpreted data sheets. So as you can see here, this recommended layout, it's really difficult to understand. There are a lot of dimensions. There are so many things to consider here. And this issue was actually made by one of my, of, of the, the component engineers in my team. And um, <laughs> it's, it's really hard, it's really hard. Uh, so for example, in, in here, the correct interpretation, it's uh, on, the, on the image that is on the left, so that one. So it's, uh, wh what do I recommend for this? Well, just always <laughs> try to keep an eye on the data sheet all the time for every single dimension. And so then we have the wrong centroid. Um, so this is actually a very interesting issue because um, you need to make sure that your centroid is defined at the center of mass of a part. Uh, but I have up here that some companies actually define their centroid at pin one. Uh, however, mm, I would say that having your centroid at the center of mass uh, helps to balance like the component during the peak and place operation. And uh, so I think it's a good practice to follow in general. Now we have the wrong component zero orientation. So, um, here you can see how um, IPC recommends us to do it. And this is a wrong one. <laughs> and so as defined by, uh, by IPC 7351, the, orient the orientation of your components should be upper left. And uh, this is one, 
This is another one really important for the pick and place machine to place the component correctly. And then we have improper pin definitions. Um, so I think when creating symbols is really important to understand the function of your component. So including including every every single pin. It doesn't matter if it's not a not connected pin. Uh, if you don't do a good job, then again the ERC rules won't work how they should. Now. Uh, I would like to show some of the checklist of verification that we have at Snap EA. Um, so first, um, I, I would like to talk about the need for libraries, to verify libraries. So it doesn't matter if you download a library from, a web, from the component manufacturer website or from whatever website. I think it's required that you pass uh, those libraries uh, through a verification process. And so this is how uh, Snap EDA creation verification processes look like. Um, so the first stage is part creation. Uh, we have defined a very detailed checklist, so everyone in our CE team has to go through it. At the second stage, we have um, a different engineering, verifying all the parts that have been created. And uh, this, the verifier is following a different checklist. Um, then we have uh, an automated verification, so the verifiers run a script uh, to do a second verification. This is ju just an example of some checks uh, that we have at our creation stage. So we have built this into our project management system, so every single component engineering has to, has to follow these checks. We also do a weekly meeting to look at what are the components that we are creating, what are the issues that the verifiers found? And also, how are we, how are we going to improve uh, our processes to avoid this, those issues from happening again? And then the last thing is automation. Uh, so this is what we're co focusing on right now. Uh, we're automating um, components such as a vertical right angle headers, resistors, capacitors, um, inductors, um, IPC standard packages. So um, just to give you an, an example of some of the verification uh, we do, um, is in general, uh, we check for industry standards, um, for industry practices, manufacturing information, uh, attributes data, and this helps us to determine if, for example, a comp component or even the data of the component is right. So now, um, I would like to share some of the tools that are available to help you. So we have Snap EDA. Uh, Snap EDA is a free library of symbol, footprint, and 3D models. Uh, now we're also starting with uh, simulation models. So we have InstaBuild. I don't know if you have heard about it, but InstaBuild is a really cool tool. And uh, it basically works with computer vision algorithms. So um, if you highlight the pin definition from the data sheet, and then uh, the pin data will be extracted using that algorithm. And then you can modify the extracted data, as you can see there. And uh, you can generate the symbol. And so the, the symbol will automatically link to a verified footprint. And it can be downloaded in like all major, ma major formats. So we also have Instaparts, so all our libraries are free, totally free, uh, but if you don't have one, you can request a true Instapart and get it in 24 hours, and you'll get notified when it's live. Uh, we also have a verification checker in every single part page. Um, it checks for common uh, manufacturability issues. And yep, just to, just to summarize, um, Libraries are necessary for real, reliable manufacturing, again. Um, implementing verification checklists at your company is really, is really important. I would say it's essential. And um, having other tools that can help you to increase the efficiency and productivity of your team is also a really good thing to do. And so I want to thank my component engineering team. And yep. Any, any questions? Uh, 
Uh, how do you get around, or how do you find that it's the best way to find the centroid of weird parts? So, like, say you have a right angle surface mount header, and you want to the pick in place to actually pick it up at the centroid so it doesn't flop all over the place. Usually that kind of thing, or often that kind of thing, isn't in the data sheet. So do you have a good method for figuring out what that centroid is? Yes, so actually what we do is that um, for non-symmetrical connectors, we have uh, the, pin one, the, the, the pin number one as defined as the centroid. But for connectors that are symmetrical, then we have the center of mass as defined as a centroid. So I think that's, that, that has worked uh, all the time. So I think it's a really good practice. Super impressed with all the qual with the quality of your footprints. That's great. Thank you. Yes, so I actually what, couldn't add that, that slide here. What's but your process for finding, uh, uh, if users find errors, what's your process for, uh, for addressing those? So in every single PAR page, we have um, like an issue reporting system. So if you scroll down in the same PAR page, you're going to see that tab, and you can click on like new issue, and then you report that issue, and you say like, hey guys, um, this is not working, this is happening, and then we will get notified and we'll contact you right away and we'll, we'll fix it and get back to you. Snap ADA has a dedicated support person to help out with that process. Okay. Oh, any channels? I'm going to try out InstaBuild as soon as I can. <laughs> yeah, you should. You should. <laughs> this is really also awesome. Can you give us a little background on, on what Snap EDA uh, is and what you do? Yeah, uh, well, so um, we design libraries, uh, schematic symbols, footprint layouts, 3D models, and si simulation models, we're starting on that too, uh, for PCB designers, just to help, to help them to design the product faster with c good clarity symbols and footprints. <laughs> Where is the not free part? <laughs> <laughs> They work mostly with vendors and uh, distributors uh, to promote the connections. <laughs> okay. We're not in a rush right now for, uh, for questions. If you have a question, another one. Well, I, I got another one. So I'll mm -hmm. I was expecting that question. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what or are your plans for, for uh, uh, dealing with the, the KiCad footprint format plan changes? Yeah, so we have been getting uh, recently a lot of requ those requests, the same request. 
So I think we are definitely planning to support the new KiCad format um, because we want our users to be able to enjoy all these new features that, that KiCad is supporting. So I think it's going to be soon. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> So is it KiCad or KiCad? KiCad. <laughs> KiCad. <laughs> there, there's, a great, there's a great email, and it, uh, for those of you who haven't seen it, you can go to the, gosh, somebody just re-linked it not that long ago. A long time ago when I first joined the project. It's on the website. Yeah. Oh, it is on the website. Yeah, it is on the website. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. 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 We can document this. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, one of the first questions I had when I joined the project way, way, way back when was I, I didn't know how it was pronounced either. So, you know, for those of you who don't know, the, the, the project was founded by a gentleman named Jean-Pierre Chirac, and, and, and Jean-Pierre is French, right? So his, his inter his, the way French the French pronounce K-I, not like the English Kai, it's key. So he, he specifically even said key like K-E-Y, like using your key. So, you know, if the, if the project founder says it's KeyCAD, it's KeyCAD. That, and that's always been mine to, you know, I'm going to respect that. With his choice of pronunciations, and I think the rest of us can, and it's fun to have the debate whether it's KeyCAD or KeyCAD, but officially it's KeyCAD. Yes. <laughs> awesome.